Joy and the children, family, leaders from government and the private sector. Good evening. To Atura, I'll go straight to the script uh, to save time. But on the onset, I want to relay mine and the UPDF's condolences to you, Joy, for the loss of your family. Patriarch Major General Benon Biraro. Our thoughts are with you in this very difficult time of grief, of loss, and we pray that God gives you the strength to stand up to this huge challenge. General Biraro has only been a soldier all his adult life, except the last stint in retirement when he made a shot at politics. So that's how UPDF is closely associated with him. I will therefore pick it from here to make remarks about him as I knew him, representing the UPDF. He has served variously on the staff and in command positions. His service number was RO116. He commissioned to the rank of, former rank of captain in February 1988. Before that, I think Benon was what they used to call J01. He's been secretary to the chairman of the high command in the Bush. He was SDA Kitgum, had S emphasis like John said, John Kazora, Special District Administrator. He was commanding officer of the 97 Battalion. He served as Deputy Commandant at Changkwanzi, Deputy Commandant of the Military Police. He served as COT. He served as 2 Div Commander. He also served as ECOS that time assistant chief of staff when we were single service he served as commandant the maiden commandant of the senior commandant staff college and then lastly as chief of plans at the AU in Addis Ababa until he retired that is his career path the details of which are in that booklet if you want to make reference. That said, the gist of my other remarks will be about his attributes as a soldier and an officer. Each of us have their enlistment groups or batches. General Viraros has been talked about by his peers and seniors as the intellectuals who were drafted into the NRA right after university. For some of them, they didn't even complete their studies, but they joined. These young people's choices were indeed tough, but not necessarily limited to the bush. They could have stayed and sought employment in government. They could have stayed and resorted to doing their own private things to survive and play safe. They could have sought greener pastures abroad. So they had options. Nevertheless, they chose the riskier option of heading, heading to the SOS of a country that needed help. For this bold decision, I want to salute Benon and his peers. <clears throat> Number two, like you heard about his service profile, he served honorably and retired honorably. I said before that we have our batches that constituted the NRA and now UPDF then. 
and now. For the NRA, they had the former UNLA soldiers. Some of them are in our midst senior people, like General Mugume and General Joram Kakari. Mugume was an officer, Kakari was other ranks. We had some Uganda Army former soldiers. We had some people who were working and fled to join. Then this group of intellectuals and those recruited from the population in the fighting zones. This particular group of intellectuals is interesting. Young, angry, burning with revolutionary fervor, educated. They went and those who survived came back and served variously. However, I'm going to be blunt here. Some of them who are not fortunate missed or fell prey to the disadvantage of missing on foundational military education. What Kazora was saying here, I think was not done adequately. And I think Tom there, Tumheire, has more stories of who was well trained and who wasn't. But most of them did catch up training later in service when they were holding high responsibilities, but were also mostly formed up in their ways of life and attitude to service the military. What kept them in check was military service. The outstanding exception in this group was Beno. He strived to catch up on lost time to understand military service and conduct. So Benoni Akafuba Kwesho Mesa Obwamahe Nemtuadze Yago Akaiha Hum Cheno Govute Jura Wamahe Govutega Goku Goku Kwite Chanya Echiavere atatunjire Vachitandaka of Sirkari. Obia whom we re special ro is it a uniform char gaho Narium he hagwa discipline Yamahe Akagma Shugene Na Twazaje Nkoa Mahe. I'm glad the intellectuals came here. Interesting. You know, there's so much going on in the world that you come home and you have so much to say because it's on another level. But he would come from school with all those small stories. <laughs> and he would, no, he would come like, Daddy, Daddy, this so excited. This happened today. Like, no, 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 first wait. Sit down. Tell me from the beginning what happened. And you're like, this girl, she came to class, made a joke. Like, the stories were irrelevant. But he listened and he made us feel important. He really did. To the point where he didn't even answer phone calls when he was talking to us. He said, no, they'll call later. It's okay. Let's talk. He gave us time. And I'm not talking about only the biological children. I'm talking about all. He, he didn't have only us, us four. He had many children. He had many children. And they stayed at home and they lived with us. And he was fantastic. He was observant. He had an eye that could see. If you lost one kilogram, he would tell you, one kg is off. You go step on a scale, you're like, yes, exactly one kilogram. He would tell people that they are pregnant before they even know that they are pregnant. He's like, I'm seeing there's something going on. You go check, you're pregnant. <laughs> so I wasn't, but I'm just saying. <laughs> he was, he had an eye, like we even got scared. We're like, he can see right through you. So you would never lie to him because you could see it. Um, he was present. He was present. He was always, always on time. He attended every one of my functions when I was elected student council. And on the, on the dinner time, you'll be like, I'm so proud of Marevi. She's student council, speaker of her school. 
you know, I'm raising kids. And you feel like you've conquered a full nation. <laughs> you know, and you're just student council. You're just student council. He lived in a moment. He really did. He really did live in a moment. He was a genius. He had great ideas every time. He had great ideas every time. There was, oh, you ask it, even the most hardest questions, like, Dad, like, you know, when you're trying to find out, that's why my faith in God is very strong, because he answered each and every one of my questions when I was doubting. But Daddy, how about this? How about that? Like, most people say, like, most people say, no, just believe, follow, follow the train of believers. And, but no, he would sit you down and explain to you why you're believing in God. And I would see God in his life all the time. All the time, even to the end. He was selfless. He gave even what he didn't have. Marebe, Kamunkaj, always give. Always. And I will. I will give. I will give. He was a hopeless romantic. Oh my God. You guys, Valentine's Day, anniversaries after a long journey was traumatizing for us. Because he would come home with flowers. He would come home with, like, and he would put on music. He would play that dance with mommy who didn't like the attention. But he posted it on her and she just accepted it and enjoyed it. But he showed us um, what a husband looks like. What a, a husband who loves you looks like. He never did anything, like, oh my God, you guys, we have lost a fantastic person. <laughs> Sorry, I really need to compose myself because I promised myself that I would speak about him without tears. He was adventurous. We had to check out every single place that was new to a point where, kind of a bad joke, but um, we were going to some place and we were passing through a bush and we were traveling. And then my mom was like, Konka Benoni. I want to say it in your career, but I want to say it without tell answer. Um, You know, some of these jokes are funny and really You can't say them in English and though. Anyway, let me try. He said, Okare to, uh, Okare, uh, ah, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let me just leave it. Let me wait for Masha to speak in Yankore. I need time. <laughs> and yet, like, at home, I'm always speaking, but when I reach people, it's a difficult thing. But he said, she said, who brought you here? Now, Fuha. <laughs> like, how did you even know about this corner? And I laughed. I was like, Mom, who says that? <laughs> who says that? He loved nature, indeed. His favorite channel was the Nadjo Wild, like everybody said. Every Christmas, after Christmas, the next day, Boxing Day, was a national park day. And uh, even while discussing in the hospital, because some of us kept the faith. Some of us kept the faith till the end. Some of us really believed that he would be okay. But it's okay. He said, we said, when he heals, we deserve a trip to the Masai Mara with him because he loves nature and we are going to go to the Masai Mara because we deserve it. This is too much torture. <laughs> but it didn't come to pass. But it's okay. He had no favorite. At least I didn't feel like he did or maybe he hid it from us. But we all felt loved equally. He is my voice of reason. Before I do anything, if I'm going to do anything bad and I think about it, when the voice that comes in that says, don't do this, it always sounds like daddy's voice because he always talked to us repeatedly. He was extremely moral. His moral compass was on point. In every situation, he, find, he found it easy to do the right thing. And people who hated him were immoral people only. Only immoral people hated him. <laughs> Honestly. He thought everything through. From our nicknames to our real names, they all have a special meaning behind them. Some of these things I can only get into them when we're in Masha because of time. He was a storyteller. I can tell that these stories from beginning to end because he told them many times, but also because of the way that they made me feel. When he said, I do he, I remember that word, I do he, you'd feel like the rebels are surrounding you. <laughs> you know, it was so real, so vivid. He, he hated conflict to the point where if you do something silly, and he's like, no, he rebukes you, of course, because he's, he lived in the moment. He rebukes you, he wouldn't keep a grudge. Then the next day, you're like hiding because you don't want to see him because you're in trouble. He'd say, Kakaz, Kaij, Stama, sit on my laps. Now we, are, we can't even sit on his laps, we are grown. It's like, sit on my laps. It's okay. What you did was bad, but it's okay. I forgive you. You're like, okay. 
Thank you, Dad. He apologized first always, even when he was not in a right. And he always tried to resolve people's arguments. He was a sportsman. He loved golf. I didn't really play golf with him. We'd just follow him to go to a restaurant and sit there, wait for him to come. But he really loved golf. As I said before, Dad's sickness brought out the best in him. Until the last moment, which I happened to be there for, I, when he passed, you know that moment when you're confused, you don't know if he has really gone, because I was looking at the, the machine and I was seeing 26 oxygen, I thought he was still there, I thought he was still there, but he had already flatlined. I just found myself in a moment where I wasn't able to understand what was going on. I found myself saying thank you to his lifeless body, just in case he had me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daddy. I want to thank him for loving sincerely, for loving us and Mom and expressing it every chance he got. I want to thank him for being, being an example of someone who kept the faith even till the end. Even till the end, when he couldn't speak and he would hear us sing his song in Emnyuanwanje, he would try to join us even in his weakest moment, like three days before he passed. He couldn't talk, but he would join us. Thank you for teaching us about the goodness of God and being an example of it. Thank you for giving us time and making us feel like the most important to you. Thank you for being an example of what a good father and husband should be. Thank you for taking risks and showing us that life is too short to be held back by fear. Thank you for being strong for us, especially in your time of sickness. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. You were a beautiful man inside and out. You made this world a better place for me. Rest in peace, rest in perfect peace, Your Excellency, because you are my president. It's a precious honor to say a few words about my friend. I'm just here to talk about Benon. Uh, a son, a husband, a father, a brother, a warrior, a statesman. I'm going to be very, very brief. Thank you, Joy, for this opportunity. And the earlier opportunity two weeks ago to come and talk to my friend at home during my godchild's confirmation, Kanyuani. Thank you, Joy Over Mkazi. I really, really appreciate you and your family. Thank you very, very much. Now, we mourn the passing of greatness. We eulogize a hero. We celebrate the sacrifice he so willingly made. He was the real deal joy. Even when he confronted with the cheap pettiness on the campaign trail, he stayed true. He believed in an honest argument and hearing other people's views. Intellectually curious, he had a deep knowledge of our world and engaging him at a deeper level actually left you wondering if you were illiterate. Whether dealing with the teething problems of agricultural production in his beloved ancestral home of Masha, keeping secrets of the high command in the Ruero bushes, plying the dangerous ambush points in Pranga and Muchuini as SDA in Kutugum, commanding a battalion in Majanja, during the tensions with Kenya, handling the regional and treacherous tensions in DRC, imparting knowledge to young warriors in Chimaka, impressing rugged generals at Leavenworth in Kansas, or just going through the guided halls of the African Union in Addis. Top of his class at Cranfield in the UK. He remained and excelled, but remained humble every step of the way. 
trusting God with his beloved joy and family by his side. As many of his comrades said last night, cancer did not scare him. When I went to see him two weeks ago, he maintained a buoyant spirit to the very end. He has devoted to his friends, his country, and most of all to his family. A grateful nation thanks you, Geno Viraro. We are all deeply in your debt. Joy, Mukago, Krista, Marebe, Kanyuani, he will be watching and cheering you on. Godspeed, soldier. Farewell, my friend. Rest in peace. Brains and character. The last one is most important. The retired Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda, Honorable Mama Mbawazi, serving ministers, Honorable Yawa Gambi, and Honorable Wangama, the retired ministers, the leader of one of our parties, Yenu Muntu, leaders of UPDF, CDF, being here with us today, Joy and your children, and all of us that are here for this very purpose. I think quite a lot has been said. I thought maybe I could do link up what is here with us today, considering what most people have said. I remember General Viraro largely when we served as officers in the UPDF, that time running the management of them. I think I was the chief of administration and later on intelligence, and I think he was Chief of Training and Operations. But let me put out some incidents that they may then tell us who General Veraro was. One day, we had a commander, and he came to me and said, Tumkundi, we took him one way, style here at the Cherum, you can't get so we chatted, chatted, and chatted. We're not going to names. So I told him, I took time and discussed the background of this officer and how much he was so different from us. General Viraro quickly said, yes, I agree with you. I think you are right, and I'm wrong. And from now on, our Tender this officer with as much kindness as you happen to give this officer. Then one other day, General Viraro came annoyed to my office. He said, now we had another commander. He said, let's go and see this commander. There was a very big problem and nothing was being done. So we went to this our commander. This commander didn't speak the same language with ourselves. So Viraru sits there, we talk, talk, talk. And this commander is not bothered at all. Viraru is totally annoyed. At we talking about way, it's Rama Yogu. Now, I stepped on Viraru's shoe, and he said, Kawa and Batash. And then Viraru, I mean, all of a sudden, this commander burst into laughter. Because this commander, he has me understand the Nyankore as much as we do. So then I said, Bavara Rugum Shija and Amanuri Nyankore. At what? At Konkana Vuchanya and Bakam Gambrama Zubana Nijaga Wantin. So Viraru goes ahead. Now, when we leave the office, this commander calls me back and says, you know, This matter is concerning General Viraru so much, and I'm sure you came with him for the same reasons. I think we have to address it. 
So go and first handle General Veraro to calm the temper, and when it goes down, come back and we handle this matter. So I told General Veraro, So let's first settle down, see if we can go back. So Veraro quickly recycled himself in his usual way. He said, thank God that this is going to give us attention. That was General Veraro for you. One day General Veraro came to me and said, Viti wetu mkunde, okay, itu kama wedi jenda, kano shota mazimaga jenzi nga kutoroka. I said, what exactly is the issue, General Veraro? And yet I have a very big message. I said, what message is this one? He took me through it. Now, I'm not a I'm not a What do you want to tell him? I don't want to tell you what he told you. He are a very indeed. I'm So now, I'm not a very good person. I'm not a very good person. And uh, it's me who chose to live. <laughs> so. I said, this cannot be ordinary. How can I have told you not to go into this? And you found it so easy to say it. He said, I am convinced that this was supposed to be the most appropriate message. Of course, I deferred. Another day, Veraro came to me with this country's politics. Create space for people have, who have slightly differing views. Create space for people who have peculiar views. And if you can, and I advise you should, tap and bring these ideas and get to know what there is inside this kind of ideas. And I want to also want to say, when a serious person like General Rara approaches you, at least I am sometimes dismissive. But whenever General Brown, he was that courteous, that organ calling you, when, and then say, I want to seek your attention. I know you do, you are busy, but I want to seek. If anybody calls you wanting to seek your special attention, if he's a brilliant mind like General Brown was, sorry to use was, please, shade of time, however busy you are, and listen to them. Because they could be telling you the most important thing that you don't seem to know. And it is about us not to know everything. So really, I, we are seeing off General Veraro. I think there is a lot he could have done. We have lost him. We will never have him again. And really, on days like this, although we are rushing, I know Joe is rushing on a journey to... to to Missingero, it's quite a distance, especially when it's at night. But I also don't think we get these audiences quite often. As I was perusing through some quotations. I want to quote some quotations that were raised on the death of a man that I think compared to General Veraro in very many ways. And this is Senator John McCain. And these were different. This is the daughter. The daughter said, we gather to mourn the passing of American greatness, the real thing. I attribute this to General Veraro without missing what. Kissinger had this to say. I know some of you struggle with these things. Kissinger was the Secretary of State of the United States, a very, very powerful one for quite a long time. Kissinger had this to say, John was all about hope. Veraro was all about hope. I have, I have, even in sickness, you can imagine somebody embattled with a novious life-ending cancer. He kept telling you, I find it, don't worry. Always with respect, don't worry. I will stay through this life. Now, George Bush had this to say. In one epic life was written the courage and greatness of our country. Give it to that. We don't have time. Obama had this to say. John called on us to be bigger. And as I conclude, 
This was also from George Bush. I don't know if these are the most quotable people, but they are very appealing quotations. And George Bush had this to say, some lives are so vivid, it is difficult to imagine them ended. Some voices are so vibrant and distinctive, it is hard to think of them still. A man who so dem seldom rested is laid to rest, and his absence is tangible like the silence after the mighty. General Graro was a full case of a human being, meant to be a general, he was a general. His politics smooth and deep. I must also say this, because he is also the Ugandan factor. Everyone offers himself. Your issue is do you really appreciate all these issues? Do you understand what is at stake? Then, therefore, General Graro, we could have more about, heard more about you. It's time we say farewell to you, and surely we shall miss you. And let's remember Joy. Joy, I want to be in Savi Ronkevi to Gamba to Kujako at Queenie, and Jacob War is the Wavi Rivera, and Korean Wogu. I can also tell you whether President were available would be so appreciative of what you did for General Veraro and would be very available.